Hey everyone, we're back on the ocean for today's Let's Be Frank and we're diving right into Flotsam. In this cell shaded voyage, the overarching goal is very similar to what we saw in the game of Raft. We need to grab floating plastic and wood. Collecting this Flotsam allows us to build onto our starting ship and eventually we can create a ridiculous floating city of sorts. I'll start at the beginning, at this very promising starting screen, which immediately reminded me of the duplicate selection screen from Oxygen Not Included. After selecting a starting crew, you have very limited supplies, a fairly limited range, and the world map is mostly covered with a fog of war. I love this concept, and through this game and Raft that have that basic trash-centric crafting system premise in common, that's where the comparisons kind of start to die off. This is a fairly singular concept for how it all comes together. I can't name any other seafaring colony management games. Space Haven actually features colony management with the concept of building up and moving around, but that's also not a very true comparison. I do want to take a moment and appreciate some of the stylistic choices here, especially when the game is at a more regular speed. The individual actions of your sailors, the buildings in use, etc. The art and animation here is appealing, and it's kind of adorable. And unlike other colony management sims, the pacing here, especially right after relocating the ship, I found myself actually utilizing slower speeds from time to time. And it was a nice departure from toggling between max speed and pausing, which is my standard operating procedure for most colony management games. For food, of course, you're going to need fish. You start from fishing chairs and eventually you can build out into fishing boats. You'll also need to desalinate seawater if you want to make sure your sailors don't die of thirst. The forefront of this title felt like a race to keep up with all the fish and firewood while I shifted the ship around to resource-rich areas. Similar to most games with crafting and survival at the core, things progressively become a little easier as you begin to thrive. With stores of food and water at your disposal, you're better able to focus on exploration and discover different waypoints. My initial concerns about fuel were apparently unjustified. Your ship can actually move around pretty easily. It's powered by a hand crank, meaning you never really run out of gas. You work to position yourself at different locations, make it easier to swim out and collect debris. Drying the driftwood is a passive process, but once it's dry you can turn it into other things. Plastic trash can be converted into plastic floats, research, or even oil. If you manage to find seagulls to befriend, build them a home, and you can keep them fed, they'll actually work passively to collect both wood and plastic for you. Since these are the most basic resources and they're required for almost everything, this frees up a lot of your colony's time in addition to being a cute and clever system of passive productivity. Finding and reaching landmarks can offer some surprises, rarer materials like metals, electronic components, and you can eventually work those into other materials. Once you've collected enough pieces to cobble together a research station, you can start even working your way up a technology tree, allowing yourself upgrades, additional buildings, and recipes. While there's only a few buildings that produce or require electricity right now, I found it to be an interesting concept to have your ship energy, for travel, wired into that same electrical grid. Because of the way these systems work together, this feels like something that could be continued to be built upon even more as time goes on. The main issue I face right now trying to recommend this game for purchase is really just a general lack of content. Waypoints, even after so many days of play, were already carbon copies of the ones I'd seen before. At this point for me the research tree is finished and there's nothing more to work toward. While it initially impressed me and drew me in, it didn't really take long at all to taper off into kind of a repetitive venture without much purpose. My Let's Be Frank videos, they often focus on value, and at the current price I wouldn't really be able to directly recommend this title until some much larger content changes take place. This is still in early stages of development, and the roadmap is interesting to say the least. In, in trying to research, I found the roadmap looked outdated and vague, and the game wiki is actually nearly completely empty. That said, this isn't some abandoned project. What we have here just seems to be a smaller team, and Steam shows fairly regular patches and updates going back a long while. I'm not going to judge it as a bad game, and it's not going in a bad direction, it just feels more like an alpha title with major concepts still being added in, despite having been floating around in early access now for almost two years. This game does go on sale from time to time if you're interested in supporting the project with a discount. Early access titles are always a gamble, and you never really know where they're going to end up. I'll likely be keeping an eye on it and loop back around when some further variation and development is added. I'd love to see some quests and world events take place and see the technology tree further fleshed out. Based on what I was able to encounter in my play, it looks like a solid foundation has been built here. With additional recipes, construction objects, and new places to explore, this could end up being a really fun, really unique experience. I appreciate each of you sitting in and listening to me ramble as I drift away on my trash barge. I will see you all again soon. Thanks for watching.